I'm going dumb. I'm trying to live it and stop. Get in the 200 likes on this video, and we will take the torque converter off and put a clutch on it. So this is my 212 swapped drag racing mini bike. It's got a 308 cam. It has a billet flywheel, thin head gasket, five degree timing key, big carburetor, all the good stuff you need to go fast. But this bike has a slight issue. I ran it on methanol for a while and I would drain the whole fuel system every time I ran it. But obviously I didn't drain it good enough because the needle is seized into the carburetor. So to fix that, I bought a 26 millimeter Nibby carburetor for it. It's two millimeters bigger than the one that's on it. So I'm curious to see what that does. And to go along with that, I have a bigger intake for it to match the 26 millimeter. So today we're gonna be taking this bike off methanol, putting it back on pump gas so it's more rideable. I think I would only get three to four passes per tank on methanol. So I'm wanting to set it up to where I can ride it around the block again. So that's what we're gonna do. I'm real curious to see if it gains or loses speed because the last time I ran it on methanol, it had the stock head gasket and it didn't have the five degree timing key. So we're gonna lose a little bit going from methanol to pump gas, but we should gain it back in compression and timing. So let's get into it. There's the 24 millimeter that was on it, but now this bike has a fuel pump on it. So I'm gonna pull the fuel pump off and see if it's still good. I'm hoping it is because I would like to run the fuel pump, but if it's not, it's really not that big a deal. Just the flow from the tank to the carburetor should feed it on pump gas. It would just be nice to have if I can reuse it. On second thought, I think we're gonna leave the fuel pump off of it for now because if I want to run it, I'll have to drill and tap the intake for the pulse. So I think we're just going to try to gravity feed the fuel for now. If it's not enough, then we'll go back to the fuel pump, but I'd like to try it before we mess up a brand new intake. So there's the 26 millimeter carb. Nibbies always look amazing. Here is the intake that we're going to be running. There's your carburetor and intake set up. So let's go throw this on the bike, put some fuel in it, and see if we can make some passes on it. So real quick, to the kid on Amazon that wrote a bad review, on this intake because he said it wouldn't fit a 212 Predator. This is a gasket that I hollowed out to match this little plastic shim. And this is the same shape as the intake. So right there, you can see it doesn't fit, but, oh, look at there, magic. We have ran into an issue. So, with the studs in the block like I have, the nut can't go on the stud because there's not enough room between the stud and the intake. So, 
I guess we're going to pull these studs out and put these bolts in it that were included with the nibby intake. So let's do that real quick. So I don't think there's enough thread coming out to use my tapered spacer, so I guess we're just gonna leave that off for now. Usually I would log tight something like this, but that head's gonna be getting hot anyway, so it probably won't help. If they start backing out, then I'll come back and lock tie them. But for now, they'll be fine. Probably way tighter than it needs to be, but better a little tight than a little loose. Put a nibby coupler on there. carburetor in there just like that now we'll tighten up these hose clamps put the fuel lines on and should be ready to make a test hit So I don't know what needle position this thing is on. I don't know what size jets are in this carburetor, but Nibby does a pretty good job of putting a base tune in these carburetors. So I'm sure it'll fire up. We might have to do some minor tweaking. Hopefully we want to pull the jets, but we'll see how it runs. We got some gas now. All 
All right, so I got some 93 in it. I'm about ready to fire it up for the first time. Put my tack back up there. Like I said, I haven't messed with the carburetor at all. I'm just hoping it starts, that way I can tune it from there. This line was for the pulse for the fuel pump. I'm just gonna leave it there until I know for a fact that I can get away with no fuel pump. So let's see if this thing will fire up. Well, it seems to be running pretty good for the stock settings on the carburetor. I messed with the lean rich screw a little bit, but not much. So I think it's time to uh, put the GoPro on and go see what this thing does. All right, so before we make some passes, I'm gonna ride this thing around a little bit, try to get the feel for it again. It's been a hot minute since I've rode it. I wanna make sure everything's still dialed. So let's get into it. So the test ride went great. Everything still feels really dialed. The fastest time I've ran in the eighth mile was a 10.3 at 61 mile an hour. That was on methanol. So we're gonna go out there and make an eighth mile hit. See how it compares. Like I said earlier, we obviously lost going from methanol back to pump gas, but we should have gained from compression and more timing. So we'll see about that. The other thing I wanted to say was, a lot of people have said, oh, take the torque converter off put a clutch on it, it'll be way faster. Nobody in Cali runs a clutch, ah da 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 da. Well, I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure the people in Cali are running a quarter mile. In that case, a clutch will be way better top end. 
We run an eighth mile. I feel like the torque converter is better bottom end. But if this video gets 200 likes, I'll take the torque converter off, put a clutch on it, see how they stack up against each other, see which one's better in the eighth mile, and maybe I'll be wrong. So let's get into it. I'm gonna go make an eighth mile hit and we'll see how methanol compares to pump gas. All right, it's starting to rain, so we gotta hurry, but I think we can get one done. All right, the drag is ready to go. Let's see what it'll do. It just lost everything. I don't see nothing. Well, it's starting to rain, so let's get it back in the shop, see what it looks like. Oh yeah, something is, is not happy in there. Well, I don't know what happened, but something is not happy. Everything still turns over, but you can just feel that it's not right. But I'm hoping that the bottom end's fine. I don't see any oil coming out, so the block should be good. I'm gonna let this thing cool off for a minute and then I'm gonna pull the valve cover off, see if I can see anything. If I can't, I'll probably pull the head off and see where it goes. Oh, well, I think we found the problem. So, the rockers are no longer in place at all. Oh. There's one. There is the little bracket that holds the pen in place. And here is the other one. Oh, there it goes. So, here is the bolt that holds that bracket in place, way down in there, and I'm guessing that the, oh, actually, I was going to say that this pin is somewhere in the motor, but there it is right there. So if all that happened was this bolt came out, I should be able to put this thing back together. There's a little bit of metal right there on this push rod. Looks like a piece of thread from the head. Push rods look pretty straight. I don't really see any warping on those, or on this one at least. Pretty good too. So, this bolt was our culprit. That's why it just shut off. It looked, oh, yeah, look, the threads are on the bolt. Get that to focus. Hopefully, it's focused. You can see it just pulled out of the head. The threads are still on the bolt. So I'm gonna guess that this bolt will not go back in there. Nah, it's shot. Yeah, everything looks pretty good. I don't think it's that big of a deal. I think I need to helicoil this or tap it a little bit bigger, one of the two, and it should be back in action. All right, so I had a six millimeter 
helicoil coil kit overnighted off Amazon and against my better judgment I'm gonna try to do it on the bike because it's gonna save a bunch of time if it works or it might get metal in the motor and it might blow up I don't know we'll see try to get this as straight as possible That didn't take much. I'm hoping that this hole is deep enough to get the tap in it, but I'm not sure. All right there. Well, there's threads in there. Good sign. So if you've never seen how a helicoil works, basically you just drill and tap the hole bigger than it needs to be. Then you put this, which is what's called the helicoil, in there, and that is your new threads. Just like that. Sounds good to me. Let's go see what this thing will do. So the bike ran a 10.5 in the eighth on pump gas with five more degrees of timing and more compression compared to a 10.3 on methanol. I think on pump gas it ran 59 and on methanol it ran 60. So not a huge difference, but definitely a difference. But I haven't tuned the carburetor at all. I don't even know what size jets are in it, so that could be affecting it a lot too. So later on we'll have to make some more passes on this bike, get it really dialed in, and then see what the difference is. 
And like I said, 200 likes on this video and we will take the torque converter off and put a clutch on it because everybody and their mom seems to think that a clutch will be twice as fast as a torque converter. And I'm just not convinced. But at the time I'm making this video, we just rolled over 2,000 subscribers. So thank y'all so much for that. I really appreciate y'all watching. Please like and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one. I'm, 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 I'm going dumb. I'm trying to live it and stunt. Get anything that I want, whenever I want. It's okay to be broke. It's not okay to be a bum. Gotta move up. I never fun. I keep